Hello everyone, my name is Ashin Prabhu. This is the second video of the tutorial Software Defined Networking. The first video we have seen uh, the overall project which we have performed for Software Defined Networking uh, and the project demo as well. Now I am just going to explain you uh, how we have performed those uh, parts in the project and a detailed explanation will be given in each of these uh, videos. So the present video which we are doing right now is the installation part uh, where we need all those uh, environment to run the software defined networking so first we are going to do is uh, we need to install oracle virtualbox so in order to install oracle virtualbox you have to go to this link uh, in the download sections you will see this for the windows source you can download it from here uh, the installation is pretty easy so you can search it on youtube or you can just uh, click on the file and keep on pressing next and the installation will be complete uh, once the installation is complete you will see a file like this uh, this will be at the start of the oracle virtual box so uh, we have to install a virtual ubuntu machine for installing ubuntu machine we need a iso file the iso file can be downloaded from here uh, www.ubuntu.com so in the download sections you can see the desktop version of it i have already downloaded the file it is in the downloads folder so this is the file which we are going to use as an ISO image uh, once these two processes are complete then we will go ahead with installation of Mininet and OpenFlow so currently we have to install Ubuntu in the machine uh, I will just go to the installation steps it is pretty easy just need to download and this is how you are going to do I will just type you can type any name as the file and you have to select Linux Ubuntu 64 bit. I am installing it. So once you click on next, uh, the default memory size is 512. I am keeping it like that. Create a virtual hard drive now. So VDI, we click on next. Uh, the physical hard drive is dynamically allocated, so it is better to use dynamic allocation instead of fixed size. Uh, even the file allocation is 8 GB. If you want, you can increase this as per your needs so we have now created this now we have to go to the settings and insert the ISO image in order to boot the system so before that if you want to change you can change the processor number of processor which is needed uh, even the display you can uh, increase the video memory and enable 3D acceleration if you need it but right now it is not required so I am just keeping it like that in the storage, uh, this is where you will insert the ISO image. Uh, the ISO image, uh, once you click on this, you have to choose a virtual hard CD drive. So this is the file which I'm going to insert. Once this is done, you press on OK, and you can start the system. So you can see the boot process has initiated. So it, it will ask me to install uh, Ubuntu. You click on this link then. So there is an option of uh, downloading updates while installing. Uh, you can select this or do not select this. So if you select this, it will take some more time to complete the Windows installation. I'll just continue with that. Here it will ask us to select one of these options. Uh, so it is a fresh uh, OS. So we'll erase this and install Ubuntu. Uh, this will delete any files, but since there are none, it will install Ubuntu. then it will ask for your location it is selecting it by default click on continue 
it is asking for a keyboard layout now English figures is already selected so you will click on continue here here it is asking for selecting a username password and all those things so we will enter it over here so I am writing my own name and selecting a password for the same So you can click on this option, it will log in automatically and you don't have to enter the password every now and then. There's an option of encrypting your home folder as well if you want to do so. I'll click on next here. So now you can see the installation has already started. It will take some time to complete the installation. So I'll pause the video for some time. So once the installation is complete, it is asking me for reset. Uh, so I just restart the Ubuntu machine, and we are good to go. Now the next step is installation of Minnet, uh, and uh, RYU version of OpenFlow. We need to install the OpenFlow as well, and uh, this is the link for that. So before uh, installing uh, OpenFlow and RYU controller. We need to install Mininet. So, uh, Mininet.org. You can download uh, the Mininet virtual machine from here. So, basically, it has three options. So the first one is Mininet VM installation. Uh, so, here the thing is, uh, VM is already having that Mininet, and you just download the VM, it will have Mininet installed in it, pre installed in it. So, you don't have to install Mininet separately. Since we have a virtual machine already, uh, we are not going to take this as an option. So the second one is installation from the source uh, from GitHub. So these are the commands to install. And the last one is pretty simple, which is what I did for my project. Um, it is installation from packages. So just doing this one, sudo apt-get install minnet, uh, the installation will be complete. So I'll install Mininet and then I'll install uh, RYU controller. Before installing RYU controller, there are a set of prerequisites which we need to install. So for installing that, uh, this is the command and all the prerequisites will be installed. Once you install that, uh, you can install RYU controller. So after that, the installation process will be complete. So now uh, we have given the restart of the virtual Ubuntu machine. It is getting restarted. Uh, the only thing which we need to do over here is uh, you can see the window over here. It is not a maximum size. So there's a left arrow key near the right control button. So you have to press the right control button. Uh, with that, what will happen is uh, the full screen will be initialized. So after restart, if you want to do it full screen, you press the right side control button along with F. So last for this. So even now, if it is not full screen, there's a one command which we have to type in. Once we type in that command in virtual machine. It will be full screen after that. So this is a command to install guest additions in VM. You just type this in a virtual machine. So once you type this command, it will ask for a password, enter the password and then the installation will begin. And after that you have to just restart your system and you will have a full screen for your Ubuntu.
it will ask if you want to continue you press yes So the insertion is still going on. So once the insertion is complete, you can go ahead and reboot the system. And after reboot, you can see that the screen would be full screen. And you don't won't have any problem using the Ubuntu machine after that. So you can see now the screen is booting up but a wide full screen is available after installation of uh, guest editions in VM. So once this is done, we'll start with the installation of Mininet and ROI controller. So these are the commands you can down you can get the link from here. So this is a command to install Minnet. We'll let it install The installation of Mininet has started now. It will download the packages and install. The installation of Mininet is now complete. So now we will install Open. Similarly then, we have to follow the installation steps for um, installing the RYU controller. Uh, we have to type this command which will install the prerequisites and then install from JIT. We have to clone it and then run this. So uh, after the installation is completed, uh, I'll just show it to you. It will form um, separate folders for each of those. And uh, which we can view over here. So once I do the ls command, uh, you can see mininet folder, you can see the openflow folder and the ryu folder. So these three folders are very important. Uh, more detailed explanation about each of them will be done in the next videos. Thank you so much for listening. Have a good day.